Nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm Blake Sessions. I'm the technical founder of Rise Robotics, um, along with Aaron, the other co-founder. And uh, we're here to talk about the Cyclone and how to use it. Um, I just want to mention a few things briefly about why it's here. Um, it's, it's inspired by musculoskeletal systems, like each of us has control over, these beautiful, powerful linkages that we use in our own lives. And uh, it's really intended to turn one of these guys, crappy little DC motor, into what you see here. And that's really the point, is to turn this into this. Because we can make awesome things happen with muscles, and this is more difficult to use than it seems. And you guys probably know that yourself. Um, and lastly, the only thing I wanted to mention before we make it more of a discussion is, uh, is the intention of the cyclone. And it's really, it's about bringing things to life. It's about animating form. Uh, and muscles are a really good way to do that. So you take, if you guys build a skeleton, if you think a skeleton can help you fulfill your design intent, whatever that is, then stick cyclones in it because the cyclones can bring it to life. They can animate it for you. And that's, uh, yeah. Can you so, just do that motor thing one more time? Because I wasn't recording. The just motor thing? Just say that motor. Oh, hold up that motor. It's, it's to turn a motor into a muscle. That's the whole point. It's the connection between these two things. Um, so instead of a more formal talk, I decided to build something subject to the same constraints you guys are subject to, namely about two days' time. Uh, and something that's really awesome about linkages is how easy they are to make. Um, so, you know, I took two days to do it. Probably about a day and a half, if not more, was just that, just this little part between these two pins. Um, so everything else, namely the box beam and the frame of it, was like 15 minutes of work. And that's how easy it is to, I mean, you guys are learning that yourself. That's how easy it is to work with linkages. That's one of the reasons they're so great. Um, so do you guys want to see it again, a little closer? Yeah? yeah. We can throw it out the window. So why is it better than like um, yeah, we, we've sort of discussed that already, but basically the biggest thing this offers over a, a regular servo is power. Like if you, if you stick a little one newton meter or half newton meter servo, like at any of these joints, you're going to get it to go like, maybe you'd be lucky to get, you know, that. Like it's just not going to go anywhere. This thing is just, it's kind of the whole point, right? Uh, so let's... Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and in servos, you have all of the load on those little tiny t uh, teeth in the gears. You have little tiny gear and little tiny teeth, and all of the load is passing through those teeth, and that's the, the big choke point for those things. So I'm really surprised it didn't tip over, actually. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was a little better. And it even reloads itself, so we can watch. This, this guy over here is an over-center linkage. It kind of passes yes. past the singularity, kind of like your knee does. So we can hope. Uh oh there it goes. So there, now it's... Back in firing position. Did you guys see that? That's actually a clever, like, yeah. Yeah, that's a clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's enough. I think we're good. <laughs> you want one more? <laughs> okay. Last one. <laughs> three different shots, three different targets. Uh, where the ball went. Uh, cool. So, what do you guys want to talk about? Do you have questions? Yeah, it's pretty repeatable. I think we hit like the light and up there at least two times. Oh, so, <laughs> so one of the coolest things about it is you can actually, uh, you know, because of the cyclone itself, you can even change how much power you give it. So I just loaded it back all the way that last time, but I could do a little tiny one, two, which is cool. So it's, it's, not, you know, it's a little bit less like a pneumatic, where a pneumatic is psh, 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 and it's repeatable, and it's, it's a, a state controller, essentially. This is actually full control, like you'd expect out of any electric system. So instead of firing, system. could you unwind it, like, a, like you draw it, and then you let it back out? Yeah, so here it is. Let's wind. So there it is. Um, yeah. So what's up? Where is the rest position? The rest position? So right, right here is pretty much the rest position, actually. There's a, there's a bit of pre-compression running through the springs. It's hitting the collars and hitting the joint down here. But right now, the cyclone itself is unloaded. It's just sitting there. So. But the actuator itself doesn't really have a rest position, right? Since it's just like the spools. Right, yeah. So it, it, it just has like a no current right. condition, essentially. And if the length is more defined by the linkage than it is the actual um, controller. So uh, 
Linkages are great for, for three things, really. And that's, I want to make this about linkages because it's, it's what we use. It's, just, it's a powerful way to design. Um, the first is that just by choosing linkage over rotary motion, you're going to get inherently very efficient structure. Like, I don't know if you guys want to pick this up, but I didn't even like begin to try to make this thing light, and it's pretty damn light. I mean, just you know, taking pieces of box and drilling holes, it's, it's pretty light for what it does, which is cool. And that's just because you adopt a linkage. You adopt a linkage, you drill some holes in box beam and water jet some holes, and it's, I mean, even that thing over there is pretty light too, right? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, especially well-designed, well-thought-through linkages are very, very lightweight systems. So that's cool. Um, the second thing is they're accessible. So the uh, second here. So these pieces that I'm highlighting now, which are essentially uh, the majority of the linkage, everything else is like the compressive power, but this is essentially the majority of the linkage. Again, it was designed in about 10 minutes. You know, it's, it's that much easier than taking a servo and getting attachments and fittings and making sure you have stability around the joint and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's easy, it's accessible, it's, it's just a, a very simple way to do things. And the last thing about linkages that's nice is you have all sorts of cool kinematics you can create that you guys have seen yourself. We all have one right here, it's our knees, it's an over-center linkage, it's what I used over there. Um, but there are you know, myriad other cool linkages that do various things. Tomas was just telling me recently about one that does a, a stroke that goes down and then back for a walking system, so it doesn't sort of waddle and bounce. So yeah, um, so linkages can do a, a surprise amount of things. And all you have to do is build a linkage that executes whatever kinematic you want, and then you stick these things between points that shrink, and how do you presto. Build that linkage that expresses the kinematic you want. Like, how do you design that? That's a is bigger discussion. Yeah, that's for for this one. Uh, the, I, I like powerful things. I love springs. I love things that go blam. You know, so. <laughs> I chose to harness uh, some of these uh, steel coil springs. Um, there are a few good resources. This is something that was done by Slocum. Uh, you can find it online, Fundament Fundamentals of Design. Uh, it's pretty good. It's very thorough. Uh, so he talks about you know, crank systems, four bar linkages, six bar linkages, uh, full definitions, under definitions, that sort of thing. Um, but honestly, I think one of the ones I like better is this one that I found earlier today. Um, once we get past all this stuff, so this is called, what is it called? Mechanical Invention Through Computation. It's another, as you guys can see, it's another MIT thing. Um, these are some cool linkages. Here's a straight line linkage. So this thing kind of like rocks back and forth like that and creates close to straight line motion where the red line is. Um, here's another straight line linkage. This thing kind of goes like this and that center point follows pretty close to a straight line. Um, there's an actual straight line linkage, which is here. People are obsessed with straight lines, if you guys can't tell. <laughs> Um, why? why? Because straight lines are hard to do for the most part. Um, and this part is also really good. So four bar linkages are powerful and it talks about uh, kinematic inversion where you can basically say, I want this thing to go through this motion or this motion or something like that. And you pick a few points and you can design a linkage that creates that motion. Similar to this, the walking linkage is a straight line linkage coupled with a circular one. Right. So it goes through the pattern and then part of the pattern is the and if it gets cut off. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Um, cool, so yeah, I mean, you guys can sort of explore the, the connection between like what you want to do, the design intent and the actual linkage itself is more of a, an in-depth discussion, but we, and that's kind of, kind of worked through on a case-by-case -case basis. But once you have that kinematic, it's very easy to pick out how to power it. Um, and in this case, we can see some good tricks. First of all, it's, it's always really good to have symmetric supports. So you can see everywhere here we have <coughs> pins on both sides. You know, it's always in three-point bending, like this, one of these two load conditions. Um, if you stick things cantilevered on the side, it tends to warp and, and uh, yeah, that, that would be good. Um, yeah, so symmetric ports are pretty important. And, and the biggest thing is just to draw a sketch, to draw a length-based sketch. So here is this one. And what we can see is the, the triangle frame, this dotted line, here is the arm, so you can see that. And if I make this driven, yeah. Um, well, when you see it move, it'll become a little bit less gibberish, which is probably pretty good. So, so here now we can see that. Yeah. But you had 
one, the other end is moving like this way. No. Yeah. Well, I guess so. so you got. Yeah. Because where would the where would the cycling go on that on that model? Yeah. So. What this is is a, is a side view of this device here. So we can see it uh, like that. There it is. That's actually pretty cool. Look at that. <laughs> so the right there, the where the cyclone itself is. This is really interesting. I'm going to do that again sometime. Um, <laughs> um, that's the changing length. So all you have to do to make one of these things is basically say, all right, I want this to happen, so we want the catapult to shoot forward. In this case, we have a compressive link. Usually it's a tensile link, but in this case it's a compressive link. So you draw a line of this length, a line of the greater length. You know, you can 403 and 310 are the numbers for the cyclone. And you freaking connect the dots. You know, SolidWorks did the dimensioning for you. Uh, you can see it at its end state, its catapulted state, and its loaded state, which is back there. Um, is that clear? You guys see what it is? So it's simple. I mean, it's, it's, you know, design, make some lines, put some holes on it where you want the pins to rotate, and that's just, that's about it. Maybe we could do like a... Granted, this is the simplest linkage you can... This one, so... Yeah, something. And now, now you're going to... Yeah. Put this one. All right, so you're... Hold on. Yeah. And we have that linear to it. All right, so you're going to... You want to do it? No, it's not shooting it. So, right, so you bring it all the way back down, and then um, right, and let it go. Bring it back down, let it go. I'm surprised it stays up like that. It's incredible. That is incredible. I can't even bounce it when it goes back to sitting on that little tiny right. platform. Yeah. And just, just do it one more time. I want to close that with the release. So that's the idea. Okay, so actually, you don't need to go Okay, just bring it all the way back. I don't want to bring it all the way back. I'm not going to dry fire it. All right, and then, then do the release. Uh, you want to release. So it goes. Put that in my hand.